So we've spent a lot of time showing you the grim numbers in D.C. 216 murders, more than 750 carjackings. Violent crime is up 39 percent from last year. And tonight we want to go back to a community that was dripped in fear just a week ago to talk about what lawmakers, business owners and neighbors are doing to try and turn this tide. So Delia Gonsalves is there. She's live in the H Street corridor tonight in Northeast. And D, we know the council extended the emergency crime bill. We know we need more police officers, but the question is, what can the rest of us do? What can community do? You know, first I have to acknowledge, and even the mayor admits, there is fear um, along, among a lot of folks who live in the community, who live in the district, looking at those crime numbers that you just ticked off a short time ago. But here's what we can do. Community members can be engaged can talk to each other, know their neighbors, be invested in their community to try to help turn the tide. I'm here on H Street, where just a week ago, as you mentioned, neighbors were gripped in fear after a father of three was killed at Crew Lounge, just a couple of blocks from where we are right here at 11th and H. And uh, the mayor came by earlier today to talk to business owners and the neighbors talk to the mayor as well about what we can do as a community to try to wrap our arms around this crime surge. And a lot of folks say civility at this time can go a long way. When politicians and police talk crime, police are down about 600. It's often about the challenges we face among the district's crime surge. When you have an increase in cases and a decrease in numbers, uh, it's going to put a strain on the detectives. Part of what I'm concerned about is our ability to attract police officers. When the people talk crime. It's not what you say, it's about how you say it. It's often about the relationships we can build despite the district's crime surge. Sometimes we don't know what a person is going through. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes a person may come outside upset. But it's up to the next person, just like driving a car. You have to be careful of the other drivers. Hello, how are you? Janethea Jefferson walked along as Mayor Bowser visited businesses along H Street Northeast and held a midday news conference where the focus turned to safety. Family members and associates who know that they have a gun in their house, who know that they have a, a loved one who may be on track to use that gun, to get to us and ask for help. You cannot control the kind of family dynamics you're born in, but you can be the author of how you write the book about your life. So while politicians work on policy and police on patrols, the people are encouraging neighbors, despite the crime surge, to face your fears and each other. Do one small act of kindness that could lead to change. If I can't be the resource, maybe I can find someone to be a resource to help you. Detectives tell us that this crime surge seems to be really focusing in the hours between Thursday night and Monday morning, and that's when MPD is deploying its crime suppression unit to target what they see is a trend on the weekend. Now, I got to say, Lesson Zoe, in, in all this time that we've been covering this crime surge, the common theme that I hear often are the resources that people so desperately need because they're suffering mentally, emotionally since the pandemic. And in oftentimes it shows itself in very different ways. And so certainly lending, extending a hand to your neighbor will go a long way in uh, helping to kind of mend the ties that we have here that have been broken in the community. So many important voices in your story today, Delia, and so many voices to listen to, and so many things for all of us to do for sure as well.